A couple of years ago, Todoist introduced boards, which gave us two ways of looking at our tasks. We could look at them in a traditional list view, or we could see them in like a board or Kanban view. But did you know that the board view, when combined with Todoist sections, can become a very, very annual planning tool. And today I'm going to show you how to set this up and also how to use it strategically so that you get the best out of it and stay focused right the way through 2024. So let's get started. Okay, so here I have the start of what I call my 2024 project planner. Now you can call this whatever you want to call it. Essentially what we're doing is we're creating a project down here at the bottom. Now you'll see right here, this planning 2024 is empty because there are a few other things that I like to put in there, but today all I wanna do is focus on the 2024 project planning. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction, this is all about the boards. Now, the first place to set this up, and bear with me, I'm gonna go through each of these steps with you. So the first thing we need to do is to create a project. And you just do that simply by clicking the plus button there, and bang, you've got yourself a new project, and you can call it whatever you like. I'm calling this one 2024 Project Planning. Now, I would then go in. Now, normally you get the choice of starting a board. You would get, the, let me just show you how to do that. Or you basically you can get the choice of list, board, or calendar if you're using the experimental features, but that's pretty useless at the moment. So let's not go into the calendar thing, but you just create a board from there. So you can do that. That's no problem. And we're set up. Now, what do we use the sections for? Now, normally when you have a board, you can see add section. So I could add a section and call it whatever I want. I've chosen to call mine, oops, I don't wanna do that. I've chosen to call mine by quarter. That's simply because I seem, my projects are not likely to be two or three weeks long. They're gonna be six to eight weeks, perhaps 10 weeks long projects that I'm working on. And some projects actually cross over into other sections or quarters. So we set up the quarters and they are set up at the top. Now, this is where things start to get interesting. What I advise you to do is start with your personal life. This is very important because Life is not only about work. Work is important, I get that, but you also have a personal life and you may have forgotten about that. So start with your personal life. So I've got my summer vacation, which usually takes place in June or right there or thereabouts. And at the end of the year, I usually have a 14 day trip to visit my parents at Christmas in Q4, so they're already in. I also know that at the moment, as we sit here in December 2023, I am planning a trip to Sydney somewhere in Q3, round about September, October time. Now, what I've done here, and you'll notice, is in the description, I'll just open this one up, in the description, I've added 14 days, simply because I need to know that I'm not going to have two weeks free, I'm going to miss two weeks of that 12 week quarter. So actually I've only got a four, a 10 week quarter. And similarly, I've done the same with my trip to Ireland. Now I know what you're looking at. We said, wow, how do you get those emojis into the task? Well, I deliberately kept one free so that I can show you this trip to Sydney here, for example, uh, I've got, uh, I'm going to show you how to do a non-completable task in a moment. But this trip to Sydney here, all I have to do on a Mac is bring up the emojis and I'm going to have to put in Australia. There we go. We've got the Australia. So I can just put the Australia flag in there and I'm going to put the Australia flag in there. And then I've now got my uh, emoji. Now I like to use emojis when it comes to my personal life because they stand out a little bit more. You'll see here that I've actually got a marathon set up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in a running emoji. So I just type in running 
Now, if you can't do this on your, if you can't do this, yes, okay. Uh, if you can't do this on Windows, because I, I, I don't have a Windows machine, then you can also do this through your mobile device. Just set up the board and then put it on your mobile device. Um, so let's put in that other running emoji there. There we go, it's all in and then we can save that. And so now I have my running in there. Now, there's a couple of things in, the, in this that you want to see. So I'm, if you look here, I've actually got Chun Chon Marathon, but actually that's going to be in Q3. We're going to be doing that in October. So that's actually Q3. So I also know that in Q1, I am going to be doing a half marathon sometime in March. Now, this is where you want to pay attention because I'm going to show you how to create those non-completable tasks. To create a non-completable task, I hope you're listening, first put in an asterisk. We're going to put in an asterisk. Then, hold on, we press space. You put a space bar in there. Now I can put in half marathon. Now I'm going to put this in capitals. Um, you can do this uh, however way you want to do it. That's it. Now, the other thing I can do is, and I'm going to do this just to show you, when I highlight that, I get the option now to create uh, some formatting. So I'm going to make this bold. So that's now bold. And that is really all I want to do. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that running emoji in. So we'll put the running emoji in. There we go. Um, we'll put it in over there as well. Um, put the running emoji in, double tap on that, put that in there, and job done. So now I've got my half marathon. Whoa, I didn't want to do that. Okay, so when you do that, you can just press cancel and it's in. So that's how you do that. You can just create, to create a non-completable task, you can actually just press the asterisk key and then space and then type what you want to do. Now, the reason why I make these non-completable tasks and I don't date them is simply because I don't want them coming up into my daily view. This is just purely for planning. I'm only using it as a board where I can move things around. For example, I might update my Apple productivity course, which is a project, over here in Q4. Now this is, the reason why that's already in is because I do that every time Apple update their operating systems. So what else can we put in here? Now one thing that I've been doing over the last uh, year, over the last nine months, I've been writing a book. That's now been handed over to the publisher, but I do know that in Q1 we are probably going to be launching the book. So I can put in uh, launch um, your Time, come your way, which is the name, the title of the book. I didn't want to put that arrow in there, so just comma your. <laughs> hey, if you followed me for a while, you know I always have trouble with my <clears throat> uh, typing. So here we go. I'm going to make that bold again. I don't have to, but I'm going to do it so you can see it. And now. Here's something interesting. We have this description area here that we can use for whatever we want to use for. I'm going to put this as um, mid-February, which I believe is what the publisher is aiming for. Now that's guess. I mean, we may not do it in February, we might do it in March, it might be in April, but right now the current plan is for February. And that's it. That's all I need to do. I'm just going to hit create that course and then that's now in. So I can put all sorts of little details in there just to give me indications of when things are going to happen. So let's go back to the Apple productivity course. I know that that is going to be, let's just say, um, let's say, uh, let's call it 25th of October. Uh, and that's it. I can put the date in there so that I can just see when I'm doing my planning, I can see, oh, that needs to be brought forward. Now, an interesting thing that you may find here is that uh, you can actually use deadline dates. So people often talk about start dates and due dates. Well, when it comes to projects, I don't believe tasks ever have start dates or due dates. They're tasks, they're not projects. Projects have due dates. Tasks just need to be done whenever you can get them done. But that's an argument for another day. But here we're looking at projects, so I can put in my deadline dates in there if you like. So what else can we put in here? Now, it all depends on what kind of work you're doing. If you're working for a company, you may find that a lot of these projects are not, or not established yet. You don't know when they're coming. 
But some of these things I need to know about. As I say, I need to know about my trip to Ireland. I also need to know a trip to Sydney. And my half marathon and full marathon uh, is also something that I want to, to, to actually know about because it's just going to keep me focused on what's going to happen. So there are other things that you may wish to do. So uh, I could be, I could put uh, your, your time, your way promotion. This is going to be something that's going to take up quite a while. Now, bearing in mind, I haven't put the asterisks in, so I'm just going to put the asterisks in now. That's in there. Again, I'm not sure when this is going to happen, but I know it's likely to be Q2. So I need to be aware of that when I'm planning out other projects. So these are the kind of things that you're going to put in. Another one here is um, Productivity Workshop. I know there's going to be a productivity workshop sometime in Q1, probably February. So let's just put in there. I know it's February. This is done over four weekends. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So I can put that in there. So I, I am aware of that coming up. Now, the thing is, I do my product workshop every quarter. So all I have to do is go into here and I can go into duplicate and I can now move that over here. And I can go into this one. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Uh, I go into the go into the three dots, pick up the duplicate, and move that to that one. And I can do the same to here. So duplicate that, and I can move that over to there. And that's about it. Now, why would you want to create a board like this? Well, the simple reason is you, the way of being able to see your limits. I know my limit when it comes to projects is around about three projects per quarter. That means I've got 12 projects that I can work on in the year. There's no point in me thinking I can do 20 projects. I would love to do 20 projects in the year, but I know my limitations and I know that I can do three biggish projects each quarter. I'm not talking about the two week or one week projects. I'm talking here about the bigger, more meaty projects. Once I can see, for example, I already see now looking at this, that Q3 is looking a little bit full. I've got a course to update. And doing, by the way, I've just noticed that I did not put my asterisks in there and I like consistency. So I'm just gonna put my asterisks in there and save. So what I want to say, I can now see that Q3 is looking full. Um, I should have actually done, <laughs> this is the reason why I shouldn't be rushing this. Uh, put my, you get the idea, I don't need to go through all of them. Um, but I can see that I've still got space in Q1, that's coming up. There's probably going to be some book edits to do that I'm not aware of yet. That might come back from the publisher. But basically, I'm looking at this and I can now start planning out my year. I know that my limit, as I mentioned, is three. You may find that it's four or five projects. It does depend on how big your projects generally are. But this is just a really good way. To do is to have given you a tool that is brilliant for being able to manage your projects. Now let's just say, for argument's sake, that for whatever reason, your time, your way is not going to get published in Q1. I can just move that across to Q2. Now the thing also you can do is, with my current one, I've actually used my demo account, but in my current one, all I have left is Q4. Actually the only thing left now is trip to Highland because I'm pretty much done with all my projects for the year. But this is just a brilliant way. Now, the next thing is, how often do you review this? Now, I would say review this every, I review them every, at the end of every month to see where I am. You may feel more comfortable reviewing it every week. I certainly don't suggest that you go into this every day. You shouldn't need to because you would already know what projects you're working on. But as a reviewing place to see, yeah, I'm on track, everything's getting done, it's brilliant. So there you go. To do is give you the tools, simple tools, to be able to plan out your year. It's fantastic. I've been using this, I'm sure, for the last two years. Prior to this, I was using Asana. I can keep everything in Todoist. And actually, I find Todoist is a lot quicker and a lot simpler to use than Asana was. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching this video. But before you go, I would just like to say, if you want to learn more about how I am using Todoist in 2024, then this video up here is the next one I suggest you watch.